What's normally a skier's dream, no lift lineups, untouched hills, is now part of the nightmare in Whistler. The coronavirus has shut down the village. It's empty of both tourists and laid off workers. But for some, it's also torn apart the promise of a new life in a new land. I was really happy that day. Syrian refugee Hamza Al Nas and his partner Yulia found jobs at a hotel shortly after arriving here in January. Just over a month later, the virus shredded the economy. We lost our jobs, unfortunately. And the house we're living also is with the, that comes with the job. But we have to leave the house as well. Now he can't sleep, has panic attacks. He says it's as if he's back in war-torn Syria. It really triggers a lot of things. It's like, it scares me a lot. So I think that's why it triggers the anxiety in me. I'm Dr. Rashid. I'm one of the that vulnerability is what can set refugees apart in this pandemic. Many people have lived through horrific trauma. So, you know, we see people who've lived through torture and war, who've been estranged from family. Sometimes they've seen family members um, killed. The anxiety may be even worse for refugees who arrive unable to speak English or French, like the six recently arrived families living in temporary housing here in Vancouver. We'd love some leads on, um, on, uh, for these families to be able to transition out of our temporary facility where they've been for two, three, four months now into permanent housing. There is one refugee who probably knows more than most about dealing with isolation. I Syrian Hassan al Kantar attracted global attention when he was stuck in the arrivals hall at the airport in Kuala Lumpur for eight months. Welcome to Canada just over a year ago. He is also living in Whistler. He's also lost his job. He's living alone in the resort spa where he used to work. I'm an experienced one. <laughs> it's not my first time, but this time it's a piece of cake. Much easier too, he says, than surviving war. You need to know how we lived as Syrians for the last nine years. We uh, used to play with death. We were living on the edge. So this is the check bees. Alcantar has started decidedly low-tech cooking classes on his Facebook page, a way, he says, to share a message of resilience with other refugees and Canadians in general. To tell them that this is a temporary thing, uh, we can get through it. Uh, they need to be patient, they need to think as a Syrians, uh, to be calm and uh, to live day by day. And so everyone waits for this village to return to its vibrant normal. But for some, it also means waiting to truly start over in their new country, Canada. Laura Lynch, CBC News, Whistler.